our chasm. Boy, are we so lucky we ran into you guys. Boy, are we so lucky we ran into you guys. Wow, those guys are jerks. I ain't even gonna front. This joke went way harder than I thought. It's actually a well-written joke. <laughs> Inside Out 2 is one of the most important movies to show their kids. Thank you, Pixar. This movie is so very important for all the kids and adults of this generation, especially, especially if you're chronically online, you you need to watch this movie. It delves so deep into the human mind and actually gives you a great understanding of what it's like to be an actual human, being able to not suppress all of these emotions, but actually have them work in unity because a lot of people just want you to suppress emotions like anger, sadness, all this other stuff as if we're not human. I love the human aspect of this movie. From start to finish, it feels like the writers knew exactly where this movie was going and it really does show because the writing in this is absolutely immaculate. I love the way they treat emotions and how they showcase humanity. It is so perfect, it is so beautiful, and it needs to be shared with a lot of people. Our main character, Riley, is a female protagonist who is 13 years old, but that doesn't matter because how human she she is, it makes sure that she relates to almost everybody. Even if she's in a very specific scenario, you can relate to some of the situations and some of the feelings she's feeling. Inside Out 2 is really showcasing itself as one of the strongest coming of age stories of the 2020 era. On an animation front, this movie compares closely to Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse, and Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Although the comedy and the animation of Inside Out 2 cannot stand with Spider-Verse or Puss in Boots, I strongly believe the writing, the overall writing, can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these movies. I am not joking when I say we are witnessing a rare gem coming out from Pixar that really needs to be shared with your children. Not only does this movie come at a time to where a lot of people, especially chronically online people, really shame others for failures, past mistakes they've made and that um, people are trying to grow from, but it also showcases that emotions shouldn't be suppressed. We should be able to really express our emotions, anger, sadness, all this other stuff. We really do need to showcase it because it's what, make us, it's what makes us human. It shows us profusely about the dangers of letting one emotion run your entire life, like anxiety, like having the fear of dying alone, of not being able to make friends, of not being able to fit in. It's very, very real and showing us how much, how far you are willing to go to push yourself in order to make friends and be accepted. I think that's absolutely strong. I'm too gross to go anywhere ever again. I really do enjoy the angle they're taking with Riley here. She is shown to be very independent in dealing with all of her emotions and everything that's going on with her head, which some people may seem as like bad because they're not showing her getting help or anything like that. But to me, as a black person, this is very realistic. Um, I can't speak for others, of course, but like in my life, I was shamed for doing a lot of things and not being able to do things independently, which made me very independent with my emotions, my feelings, everything like that. And so Riley, what Riley is showcasing here really does resonate with me. And it's something that a lot of kids go through, especially if they're black, because the black community very much hates therapy and I'm a person who went through therapy despite all odds because I was at the lowest point I'm not trying to make it about me but I'm just saying these are real people independent people who go through these emotions they they're very real pushing yourself hard and being uncomfortable isn't necessarily a bad thing but it showcases how hard it can be when someone pushes themselves too far and goes over that line just like just like emotions just like anything humans need balance of emotions and of a lot of other things and i really love how it showcases that in grave detail the last thing of this movie will have you crying the writing is so magnificent and i also love how the how at the very end it showcases that Riley isn't necessarily a good person like she builds up all these beliefs and these beliefs make up like 
who she is. And you can't just like suppress the failures. The failures are a part of you. And I love how that just comes together at the very end. The second movie treads some of the same waters and ideas as the first one. But not only that, it's very different because it expands on it and it also strengthens the core system of the first one. Like, this is the best version of Inside Out. Instead of using familiarity as a bait because we are in that sort of era to where a lot of companies, mainly Disney, use sort of nostalgia and like things we are familiar with in order to bring people back to the theater. They don't use it like that. They use it as a setup in order to expand and tell a better, stronger story. With all this being said, I'm personally gonna give Inside Out 2 a 10. Regardless of how this movie performs, just know that you have made history and I am extremely thankful you are able to care about children, care about how they want to see the world and like being a better influence on them. I appreciate that. Thank you, Pixar. But that's all I have to say. Anyway, how's it going, pups? It's a canine and I'm